After my last video, I got a lot of comments about how I should start using PCBs. Um, I don't really know how to use PCBs, but oh, oh my God, they're so, uh, use a PCB, you idiot. As a disclaimer, I do not claim to know anything about what I'm doing. So here we go. Let's learn to use a PCB. I started out by heading to the local library and okay, maybe I didn't do that. I just researched it online like a normal modern human. It's finally time for me to jump in and learn how to make a PCB. If you've seen some of my other projects, you know that I've been like stuffing the electronics inside and trying to make it work. PCBs can save you a ton of space by integrating all of the circuits and wires into just a simple chip. This is um, my first attempt at robotics. I did not post a video about him because, well, as you can see, he's super ugly. But, uh, you know, he's cool. Let's just check it out over here. So I built a little app for him and I just got to connect. Okay, and so he can walk. Um, I'm not really good at making walking patterns. So he's not the most proficient walker, but uh, he, you know, he does it. And then um, my favorite is like the special features I put in here so he can stand up, he can wave. That's probably my favorite and he can do push-ups. But let's not get distracted. The point is that these electronics are a situation and this is why I need to learn how to make PCBs. I knew that I needed to research three different things in order to make this happen. One, what are the tools out there to design PCBs? Two, how do I design my own? And three, how do I order a PCB and get it to my doorstep? In my research, I found that there's a lot of different design tools you can use. I chose to go with Easy EDA because there was a lot of YouTube tutorials and information out there, so it was easier for me to get started. The next thing I had to do was to learn how to actually use the software, so I watched a couple YouTube tutorials of people making very basic circuits, and I kind of just worked along with them. And then I felt ready to actually create my own. This means it's time to bust out the old beginner kit. I've used this thing a lot. Let's see, I think for this project, I'm just going to need a resistor. I don't really know which size. I'm gonna have to Google that. I decided to build a basic and logic gate because why not? I used a breadboard, a nine volt battery, some resistors, two transistors, two switches, and a blue LED. These are the components for my basic logic gate. In all transparency, this was my first time building a logic gate or using a transistor. So in order to make sure that I got it right, I started super simple and just made the LED work. And then I tried to get it working with a switch. And then I slowly started integrating other parts. Finally got this guy working. Yes. So now it's time to incorporate some transistors, which I've never done before. So we'll see what happens. All right, so it took a little bit of trial and error, but I've made my first logic gate here on the breadboard. This is the proof of concept. So um, the fact that this works means that I can start making the PCB schematic and getting this all set up. But I'll just show you a little demonstration here. The way this works is if you hit one switch or the other, one at a time, it won't work, but when you activate both, it'll light up. So it's a basic and logic gate. It's pretty cool, huh? It's time to turn it into a schematic and, you know, try to get a PCB ordered, I guess. See how this goes. Here's turbo mega speed of me trying and failing and retrying multiple times to figure out the right components and wiring. But uh, after a bunch of trial and error, it I figured it out. So, you know, don't, don't judge me, but it happened. I did it and it works. All right, so after working on this for a couple of hours, I've got a schematic of this circuit. I used the auto root feature to draw the wires for me because I'm um, not very good at that yet. So I've got my schematic here that just mimics the same uh, 
layout is what this this here is. And then I used then I pulled in all the components and wired them up. I used the auto router because uh, I wasn't confident in my ability to wire this up well, and it just looks way cooler this way. You can also do a 3D view, and it renders all the components for you. So you can just triple check that it seems like you got it right. So I guess it's time to order it. That brings us to our sponsor for this video, PCB Way. They have no idea that I don't know what I'm doing. I really hope this works. A lot of options here. A lot of options. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna go with the default. All right, so very soon we should have a PCB version of this little logic gate. Ooh. This little logic gate that I made here. How fun. What? This is what I do in my free time. Thanks, PCB Way, for being the sponsor of this video. I'm just a guy. Shout out, PCB Way. So I ordered my PCB and it came in this packaging and it was packaged really well and I opened it and was super stoked to see my little logic gate and I think it's super cool, super happy with it. I think they did a great job. Okay, so this is my PCB. PCBs are made up of a couple layers. The first layer is what's called the silk screen layer and that's what allows you to put kind of text here and notate where the components are gonna go. Below that you have the solder mask. It's a very thin layer. It's really there to protect the copper traces and the components from touching anything they shouldn't and preventing shorts. It's also what gives PCBs their color. In this case, I chose black. Below that, you have a copper layer. Now the copper layer doesn't go throughout the whole board. It's only where you've dictated that you need connections. So they're called traces. You can see these tiny faint lines here. Those are actually the copper traces and those connect the different components together and deliver the current. On the inside, you have just a thick layer of substrate. That's really just what gives the board its rigidity and kind of gives you the ability to, to put components in there and know that they're gonna stay there and solid. And this is actually a two layer board. So the same layers are repeated on the back. You've got a layer of copper with the traces. You've got another solder mask. And then I didn't have a silk screen layer on the back, so I didn't need any text on the backside. So there's no text there, but yeah, this is pretty much it. Um, the reason why I did a two layer PCB is because it allows you to trace more complex wires across the board without them crossing. So if you try to do it as a single layer, you would have to make sure that none of these traces cross each other, otherwise they would share the current. But in this case, because I was able to do a two layer on the back side, I have wires running that would otherwise cross on the front. So. This uh, allows a little bit more freedom in terms of design and makes the design a lot more compact. I removed the components from the breadboard one by one and placed them into the PCB. I left the long leads on there so that I could bend them out to the side and they would kind of keep them secure on the PCB so that I could solder. I started soldering them one by one and just trimming the leads off as I went, all those little extra bits. If you guys have tips on how to, you know, not have pokey bits on the back, please let me know. I would love your tips. I don't know about you guys, but I'm always putting LEDs in the wrong direction. So um, I tested it first and then I actually soldered it in. So you can see on this basic logic gate that I created here, there's um, two buttons, there's three resistors, an LED, and then two transistors. The goal of this project was really just to create a simple PCB. Um, and this allowed me to do that by just creating this AND gate. So all it does is if you press one button and then the, you press the other button, nothing will happen. But when you press both buttons, the LED will come on, plug it in. So I'll add this little DC jack just to run a basic nine volt battery. And you can see as soon as I hit two buttons, the light comes on. There you go. One button, nothing. Two buttons, light. I'm pretty proud of this little thing. And yeah, this is my little friendly circuit. 
and uh, you know, it makes me happy. It's cool. I'm excited about it. All right, so overall, I think it came out pretty well. Um, I'm very happy with my first attempt at making a PCB and you know, it works, which is cool. So yeah, I have these extras. I can try um, different resistors. I don't know, different colors, LEDs, but really the point was to just get my first PCB done and I did. So I'm thinking back to all of my other projects like my Rover and my Kame robot I showed you earlier and thinking, you know, how could I use this skill to improve my projects? Have you ever made a PCB before? If not, what would you do? If you have, what was your first PCB? This one was mine. <laughs> I just made this little logic gate because I'm a nerd. She works and that's what matters, right? Okay, I don't need your judgment, internet. <laughs>